Uh, one artist that finished her Masters of Fine Arts, her MFA, seven years ago. And her work has gone from the 10,000s to the hundreds of thousands on the primary and the secondary market. Listen, we have to protect her. We have to protect artists like her. Let's do an artist dive on Jordan M. Castile. What's going on, y'all? I'm Mariah Elise. This is Frame. And you guys already know what's up. I'm going to give my perspective on the art world, how I know it to operate so far, art market analysis of certain artists, and art culture talk. If you're into that, make sure to click that subscribe button below. Do your thing in the comments and click the like button. It's a huge help, even if you don't think so. So let's get into Jordan M. Castile. Let's dig into her career and quickly assess how her work has appreciated, why it has appreciated, and how she needs to continue to be held down so her work can remain its cultural and monetary value over the course of her life and after. And why having a strong support system and being patrons of the artist is the key to a sustainable career. So we have to know that Jordan Castile's was not insanely expensive 10 years ago. I mean, she was still an undergrad 10 years ago. But now some of her work has appreciated 5,000%. The reason I'm focusing on this is to establish a few points. One, black artists hold monetary, cultural, and aesthetic value in this world. Two, if you collect and hold the right artists, your assets and art will be worth millions. And three, the decisions that collectors make should be based on what they love, what's significant to them in culture, but also do your due diligence and research the artist. I can only dig collectors with integrity. Y'all know I only love collectors with integrity. Don't collect only for money, but let me also say, it does not make you wrong to be smart about the work that you collect. Separate your collection into passion purchases and purchases that you still love, but also could hold the opportunity to create some value. But if it never does, you still love it. Also keep in mind, collectors that build community with other collectors and patrons of the arts have the absolute power in shifting the value of an artist and their work. Let me also say, I'm not a fan of people that flip art. It does not help the artist, it doesn't help the other collectors collecting the work, and it truly doesn't help you. Hold the work, continue to rave about it as a community, continue to raise the cultural value, enjoy the art, allow a few collectors to start selling it if they want. About 10 years later, have more demand on the market than supply and watch the value go up. And while I'm on it, I'm not into these artists not getting a percentage of the work when they didn't sold the work or the collector sold the work for $100,000. If you're gonna make that much money off of an artist, be a patron of the artist because essentially that artist was a patron of you when you made that amount of money. All right, so Jordan M. Castile, if you wanna check her Insta out while we talk, I'm gonna place the link with her Instagram below. Um, in the description or you can go to your Insta on your phone and type in at Jordan M. Castile. That's J-O-R-D-A-N-M-C-A-S-T-E-E-L. So let's go backwards. In 2014, just seven years ago, Castile's pieces were priced at $6,000 to $10,000. Now her work is selling for $100,000 on the primary market. Now, if you guys need a breakdown between primary market, secondary market, and all that jazz, I covered it a little bit in Auctions Explained. You can click that link above me if you want to check that out. Anyway, so now her work is selling for more than $100,000 on the primary market. If we go over to Mutual Arts, her latest to sell at auction on December 3rd, 2020, realized at $475,000. Let's do, let's do the math on how her work has appreciated over time, okay? So this piece titled Jonathan from her Visible Man series sold for $6,000 in 2014 like we just talked about. In 2019, it unsurprisingly hit the secondary market and it sold for $325,000. That's 5,000%. That's more than 54 times the original price. Let me tell you something. I usually don't agree with artists growing that fast. And I read an artsy article literally about what I'm talking about right here. And when I read it say exactly these words, that kind of astronomical increase in value, especially by an artist 
in her early 30s can raise concerns about market speculation and its negative effects in the artist's career in the long run. When I read that, I couldn't agree more. I had the same fear for her and that's why I said at the beginning of this video that we got to protect her. Now, many people think that her career is going to sustain because of the support she has. I can also agree with that. Many people think that she's already protected. But I say continue to keep your hand on her, continue to protect her in her market, in her career. I mean, she's anchored around her work, but also she has anchors around her career. Listen to this. And when, when I say this, listen very carefully. Because if you're an artist, you're going to want to listen to what I'm saying. If you're a collector, you're going to want to listen to what I'm saying. She received her MFA at Yale studying painting and printmaking between 2012 and 2014. And though I don't believe you have to receive an education around the arts to be an artist, I do believe it can help your career tremendously. This is the start of Castile protecting herself, okay? Being an MFA at Yale make it a bit easier to be sourced as an artist because a lot of your collectors, your institutions, your galleries, your curators, your dealers, they're going to go look at the MFA students. That's what they're going to go first because it's a good indication of who is going to go into the future, who's taking their career as an artist seriously. I'm not saying that you have to be a student on a master's level or a collegiate level, but I am saying it helps. You can be self-taught, you can be self-studied, but those students are picking the eaters of people that pay attention to the arts. Now please don't get it messed up. Getting an MFA does not make you a great artist. Jordan has a continuation of support from groups of collectors, directors, people that sit on museum boards that chose her. She has patrons and advocates who simply advocate for her collectors who share with their collector friends to collect her the right people chose castile and chess and castile really chose the right people along with how beautiful her work is her community is key to creating and cultivating a sustainable career having a great collector's network a curator's network she's connected with people who have decided to be advocates of her work she has had great scholarship around her work but even outside of all of that market talk the relationship she has with her work speaks through it. It's intimate, it's relevant, it's vulnerable. You can feel the vulnerability travel between Jordan, the photograph, and her subject. You can feel her relationship with this humid, forming from brush to oil to canvas. You can feel the process, the trying process, all of it. And you can relate that to how these black boys relate to her and how she's able to ca capture their spirit exuding their vulnerability. I mean, she says so many times that she's rooted in community engagement and of course that she's painting from her own photographs. So you have to imagine the community she's, she's building on grassroots from her taking these photographs of these men and painting them. She's building community on the grassroots level, but also on the other side with the collectors and the dealers and the curators. She's building a complete, strong, anchored community around herself. And she has help doing it. And because she is the woman that she is painting the subject that she's painting, we gotta protect her. She has become this bold face of a black woman who paints black men. And she started this at such a pivotal time when people decided they decided that they wanted to start seeing the dismay happening to black Americans and black American men in general. But she's in her early 30s and her market has gone insane. We need to allow her the space to grow while assisting her and making sure her importance remains because we chose her to be important. Because as a community, we chose her to be important. We have to make sure her anchor remains strong, that she remains in museums and institutions and strong collections. Now listen, I want you to listen to this if you're a collector, if you're an artist, if you're a dealer. A lot of you guys already know this stuff, but some of you guys don't. And remember, this is my perspective. But this is the type of support that she is receiving. Listen to this type of support that she's receiving. Well, her career has been able to amass this amount of success. We've already talked about her getting her MFA. We've already talked about her building this collector base and building this curator base around her that's garnering all of this support. But listen to this. That piece, that painting that she sold, that was, uh, that was bought for $6,000, that was sold for $325,000. So it was sold to Michael Ovitz. I think I'm saying his name right. I hope I'm saying his name right. But this painting is now sitting in the new museum because it's on loan from the collector who is the former president of Walt Disney. 
Think about the connections that he has. Think about who his friends could be and who he's telling to go out and support and patronize Jordan Castile. Now, I'm not saying that I know that this is happening, but I'm saying that I know that happens within the art world. You tell your friends, you tell your community to go patronize this artist, but even if they're not, he's patronizing her tremendously by getting her into these museums and having her be anchored even more by this institutional support. Now, how do you do this? It's grassroots. You start by you hustling, creating good works, going to these galleries, being present, growing your collector base, your network base, and again, this painting is sitting in the new museum on loan. Having the right collectors collect your work is a huge component in maintaining your market, especially if they're the one of the top 200 collectors in the world like Ovitz, who clearly cares about his collection. So that makes me sure that he has massively cultural pieces within his collection that help raise the value of Jordan's pieces. We have to continue to do that and continue to make sure that her work holds her value on the primary and the secondary market. We need to make sure that her work sustains throughout her career and then after her death. Again, she has had the scholarship, she has had the degree and the support on several levels. I do not think her work is done appreciating. I hope to see, as a young artist, uh, I hope to see this young career that she has flourish throughout her life. So guys, y'all let me know if you're into these type of videos. Hopefully, I've gotten to quickly why her work and how her work was able to amass this amount of success over this short period of time. And you guys have an understanding. Help me out. If I can make it a little bit more organized, let me know in the comments. Let me know if I need to make it shorter, a little bit longer so I can expand um on you know these artists in their mark but i really want to focus on putting some videos together about artists that uh that are not a hundred thousand dollars right now maybe some artists that are between two thousand and six thousand dollars some that are actually affordable but you guys need to be ready so head over to my video about how to prepare financially for a collection so we can buy those pieces that are two thousand and six thousand dollars so we can possibly become um, or make those pieces a part of our collection and as a community begin to collect those artists together patronize those artists together and uh, hopefully we can get those artists to go up in value and we got to support them we have to support them while they're young and and help them and assist them in growing their market in their career y'all make sure to follow me on instagram clubhouse and all that jazz my handles are in the description also make sure to follow one of the main artists i'm working with who is lamont french You're gonna hear me say his name a lot that's his painting behind me which is a part of his aroma series his instagram is french underscore lamont we have a, a, a exhibition titled fuego on june 11th if you want more information about that, if you want more information about the pieces that's going to be in that piece or pieces that he has on hand, let me know. DM me. I live with his work in my home. He's an artist I patronize. I 100% believe in and support. I encourage my friends to collect him. If you want to see more of it, again, DM me or email me at my email address, which is Mariah Elise at EliseArtGroup.com. I know I said a lot today. <sighs> Hope this video gave you what you needed. If y'all want some more, let me know in the comments. All right, y'all. Y'all have a good one. Love you guys. Be safe in this crazy world.